back to the channel, good friends, Brian from Apex Auction Reconditioning. And within the re reconditioning realm, not only are we just talking about cleaning the car, correcting the paint, protecting it, cleaning the inside, but we need to be able to uh, recondition mechanical issues as well and fix them and take care of them. Because unfortunately within the world of buying auction cars, flipping them or keeping them for yourselves, there's gonna be a very large percentage that have issues and you're gonna have check engine lights to deal with and you're gonna have mechanical issues to deal with or fix or live with. Um, but in order to find out what they are, guys, I recommend looking into an OBD2 sensor or code reader. Today, I'm gonna to show you um, a reader that I picked up there are so many out there from $50 all the way up to $1,800, thousands of dollars. This one here in the low hundreds, I think it was under $300. This is the Zurich ZR15S. So it's the ZR15. There was the 13, there was the eight, there was the four, there was the two. This is the latest model. Probably one of the more expensive units that you can pick up at the Harbor Freight stores but not even close to the most expensive units you can get into. Uh, the expensive units you can get in and actually uh, manipulate uh, some of the parts within the vehicle. I just want something that reads codes. Uh, this one here is Bluetooth and also can hook up to the internet. That way you can uh, download the rep repair solutions too which is an app and it teams up with your code reader uh, and smart device to instantly provide assistance and fixes from ASE certified master technician. So it is a huge help, especially to somebody like me. Uh, I'm more into the detailing realm, but I can do some very minor repairs when it comes to issues with cars and I need to start by having something like this that can guide me to the problem. Let's do an unboxing and get into the video. Okay, let's get to the unboxing. We'll do it from the bottom. Okay, so you do get a rather thick instruction or owner's manual, handy dandy carrying case. All right, so we have a pocket in the inside here for your cables or dongles. You'll be able to connect from this into a laptop or PC. This one here connects from the top of the unit into your OBD2 port. And they do send some of these crappy factory uh, batteries with. Uh, if you take off this rubber case here, which is a protectant, you're gonna see in the back, find the best way to get this off. We'll just peel it off like this. A little bit of a protective case for if you bounce it around a little bit. But you're going to see this opening here will get us to three AA batteries. And I just need to find a small Phillips head screwdriver for that. I'll be right back. Okay. This one should work. Normally these, these flaps in the back here are just, they just have a plastic tab. Hmm. There we go. I'm not gonna use the cheap batteries. Hopefully these will be a little bit better. Some good Duracells.
We have that nice and tight. Let's get the cable unwound, stretch it out a little bit, attach it to the top of the reader. Gonna make sure it's going the right way here. Be careful putting that on so we don't bend the pins. Get this screwed on the top and secured. Snug that up a little bit. And we are ready to read codes. Okay, we are going to power up the unit. And as we give it time to cycle through, well, first we need to skip the solutions. Okay, no saved vehicles in the tool itself. As you hook this up to vehicles, I'm not sure how many will store, but say I jump from this one to the next one to the next one, and I go back inside and uh, jump on my laptop or my home PC, I'll be able to go through here and it will save the information that it has found from those vehicles. So that's pretty cool. No uh, vehicles are saved at this point. Uh, another thing I want to show you that is really neat right off the bat is there is a little bit of a light here, an LED light. Some of these ports are really a pain in the ass to find. Luckily, uh, this one here, which is GM, this is a Cadillac Escalade, it's right here. So it's easy to find, but some of, the, some of these that are um, inserted deep into the footwell or the kick plate, and you're not sure which way the port cable has to go this way or this way or what angle, this light helps you see what you're doing. So let me get this hooked up. And as soon as we hook this up, first you have to turn the key on, of course, but as soon as you hook this up, this thing will start to scan immediately. Let's turn the key on. Well, I need to have the key, so give me a minute and I'll go get it. Pete's sake, I need the key to turn the ignition on. a few easy help questions. That's impressive. Let's get the radio off. Let's get this plugged in. Uh, all right, so we have it plugged in. Auto link is in progress. It is uh, running through there. It's at 100%. Uh, we need to skip. We don't need to download the repair solutions to yet. We will eventually. All right. The intake camshaft position system. So that is a sensor, guys. The camshaft position sensor on the front of the motor here on these GMs. It's such a common issue. Um... and everything else is green here. So that is a good sign. So what you're gonna see on this tool, if everything's green, it's good to go. If you have a solid red, that's something that needs to be taken care of, that's an issue. If you have a blinking red, um, so the best way to, to explain what blinking red is, maybe somebody cleared something, but it's not taken care of. The, the uh, computer needs to cycle through, get information, get some more information, and if it's good to go, it will turn green. And if it still needs to be addressed, it will turn a solid red. So if I hook this up to a vehicle and I see one or two or three of these flashing red, I know they've been cleared and uh, I'm going to be in for some fun. So some really neat uh, information. Again, Bluetooth, you can hook this up to uh, a smartphone or a device and you can hook this up to the internet as well. Use the arrows to scroll down and you'll see it'll tell you the severity of the fault, which is a two out of three, and they want you to replace that as soon as possible. Uh, another thing we have, uh, two of two, it senses a small EVAP emissions leak. Guys, that could be something as simple as just going back to the back of the vehicle and checking your gas cap. 
always start with the small, simple, cheap things first, and then work your way into the uh, more complicated issues. Another thing, when it does lead you to, uh, like this first code led us to the, the crankshaft positioning, it may not be the sensor. It may be something up the line or back down the line that is giving you a problem. Uh, I recommend taking the unit into your laptop or computer and investigating further and try to pinpoint it down to the exact problem. So this will give you a broad range of what's wrong with it and then you need to do a little bit more investigating as to find out and pinpoint exactly what's wrong with your vehicle, but a great tool to get started with. Now, I do wanna show you that when we start this up, we will have, I believe, an engine light and an airbag light that will stay on. Um, so we're gonna clear it, get rid of that light, see if it cycles back through. To clear these, simply press erase. Erasing clears all DTCs. Are you sure? Erase. Give it a couple minutes, erase successful. Now it's going to run through and do the same diagnostic cycle that it did when we first plugged it in. And we'll see after we skip here if it shows up once again during that cycle. Now we have all of these that were cleared and had a problem. And I'll show you how to look deeper into uh, all of these um, indicator lights, these ILs and see what the problem was. But these are all blinking now, so those are issues that the, these areas might have had that have been cleared. If they were a solid red, they would have been uh, an issue picked up right off the bat that need to be addressed. Really, uh, typical of this vehicle with 215,000 miles on it, only three of the indicator lights are solid green, which is good to go. So now, when we start it up, that engine light is going to disappear. And the only thing we're gonna have left is the service airbag light. I'm not sure if that's passenger side or driver side. And then once we click the seat belt, that one will disappear as well. Now, as you drive it and it cycles through the onboard computer, that light could go on again. Okay, now let's try something different here. We'll go to the uh, system status, and we'll go down to all module scans. So that will scan every single module on the vehicle here. All module scan. Start. Cadillac 07 Escalade 6.2. Yes, that is the vehicle, so we press yes. One moment, and it will start cycling through. And we'll check every single module. Once it's through, we'll be back. Guys, with the vehicle, also something to keep in mind while this cycles through. An older vehicle, an 08, something with 200 some thousand miles, 300, 400 thousand, some of these modules are gonna kick some information back. And as long as there are no lights on the dash and these components work, don't drive yourself crazy. Uh, the check engine light and a misfire and it not shifting, some of the major issues, this is where the tool comes into play and can help you uh, fix some of the, the, the major problems quickly and easily. As we're getting towards the end here, uh, you know, it's going through the theft deterrent module, every single module. I hope it really gives me some information on the airbag module. This did have a recall for the airbag, and that was the passenger side, I believe, so I'm hoping it gives me some information. Uh, one, all right, so we have one for electronic brake control. 
There's a module that is calling for some help. The suspension control, that I do agree with because we have the um, stabilizer light coming on. So that's definitely one there. And you could just cycle through. Uh, there's going to be multiple ones. And you can erase all of them. And they will, if they are a huge problem, come back and cycle back. And you can take it out for a 15, 20-minute drive, 50 miles or so. Uh, you know, whatever you can do, come back and scan it again. Another thing I want to show you here is your live data. You can hit this button here and it will bring you to fuel systems and start the vehicle up and you will get graphs and uh, what do we have here? RPM, vehicle speed, you could take it out for a drive and it will lay all this out for you in a detailed graph so you don't have to read digital data. Really cool. Guys, this thing has so many cool features as you dig into it. If you're not sure where the port is on your vehicle, in the menu, you can punch in the year, make, model of your vehicle. It will give you a detailed diagram, a blinking little indicator exactly where the port is so you don't have to spend time upside down with your legs in the air searching underneath the uh, dash for it. If it is under the uh, leg board there for the dash on the driver's side, could be at a different place on these uh, imported vehicles. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. It's packed away nicely in this little carrying pouch here. I'll put a link down below or just hop on into Harbor Freight. Not a sponsored video, just something that may help you. There are so many different models available. And if I was a professional or a real certified mechanic, I'm really, um, I'm sure you could dig deep into these vehicles. Again, I'm just here to do the simple stuff. If I come across something that is just too complicated for me, I will pass the job on to a certified and professional mechanic, so don't worry. But the little stuff, I am going to get footage uh, of the little stuff that I can confidently repair on some of these auction vehicles to get them back out on the road, either to keep them and drive them or to flip them and, and see if we can make a profit. This has been Brian from Apex Auction Reconditioning. Catch you in the next video.